Alberta, key area such as stronghold for conservative support, but take a look at the map of Alberta from the vote yesterday. 34 seats in play in the province of Alberta. There is orange there. There is red there. Calgary Skyview, and there is much to talk about as far as the Alberta story, which we're going to do with Graham Thompson, who's with me this morning, former political columnist for the Edmonton Journal. He is in Edmonton this morning. He's getting a column ready. I don't want to give away what you're what you're writing about, but I, I will get to it because it's going to come up in the course of our conversation. Graham, good morning, and thank you for giving us some time today. It's my pleasure. So if you look at the map as we were, maybe we can bring it back again. It really does look blue still. But if yep. you look at the numbers, Graham, conservative popular support in Alberta down 14 points from 2019. NDP popular support up nearly 8%. Liberal popular support up nearly 2%. How significant is that and those shifts? It is actually huge for Alberta, even though the election nationally last night we got the same kind of results as we did in 2019 but things have really shifted in alberta 34 seats in the province and last election 33 went conservative one went ndp well last night we've got um the ndp holding on to their seat maybe getting another one in edmonton greece boss so potentially two ndp and then as you mentioned the liberals uh winning in skyview calgary skyview and in the seesaw battle ahead in Edmonton Center, so that's four progressive uh, MPs. And this is huge because normally the Liberals only win seats in Alberta, and very few of them, when their federal party is headed to a majority government. 2015, the Liberals won four seats in Calgary. 2019, with the Liberals headed to a minority government and not doing so well, the Liberals lost all four seats. But yet, as the federal liberals were headed to a minority government last night, we saw them pick up potentially two seats in Alberta. And if my question is uh, why, what is behind that, would there be a two-word answer to that perhaps, Graham? Jason Kenney? Yeah, uh, Jason Kenney. Yeah, he actually, in a sense, became a ballot um, box issue. Uh, the way he's handled the pandemic. In the summertime, he lifted basically all restrictions in Alberta on July 1st, saying that the province is now open for good, the pandemic's behind us, it's over, let's just you know, live our lives as normal. When you have experts, medical experts saying, no, you're moving too quickly, this could create a really bad fourth wave. Well, he was wrong, the experts were right. We're into a massively bad fourth wave in Alberta of the pandemic. And Kenny last week had to eventually announce uh, restrictions, more restrictions, a state of public emergency, public health emergency, and also uh, bring in a vaccine passport. And this has managed to irritate people on both sides of the issue. Those who want more restrictions have been saying he's waited too long. Those who wanted fewer restrictions are saying he has gone back on his word. But he has handled the pandemic so badly, he is now the least popular premier in the country. He's facing a, a caucus revolt that may see him being booted out. We don't know yet, um, but this is a real problem for him. Plus, they're losing money, they're fundraising, they can't help, uh, they, they're losing fundraising because the NDP is doing so well and Kenny is doing so badly. And now you've got the federal conservatives no doubt angry at him for becoming an issue in the election campaign. So what's happened here is that the the provincial scene has bled over into the federal scene. And it seems that the Liberals and NDP did a lot better last night than we thought they would do because of the public's anger at Jason Kenney. So Aaron O'Toole, for example, had praised how Kenny had handled the pandemic response, but then it was, you know, becoming a crisis situation. He didn't talk about Jason Kenny, but Justin Trudeau very successfully tied the two together, and obviously it affected uh, people's perceptions of conservative government response to things like a crisis. Is that you know, that's how it's bled into the federal scene as you see it? Yeah, I think that the, absolutely. Yet you, you had Trudeau wanted to, to make. Kenny an issue, and Kenny basically hid for most of the election. He went on vacation during the federal election just so he would not become an issue. He is so toxic these days for conservatives. But at the end of the, the campaign, when Alberta's fourth wave was forcing Kenny to take some action, and you're right, Errol Tool just days before praised Kenny for doing such a great job in the pandemic, when it was clear, of course, he wasn't 
and things were going sideways, and we've got this record number of uh, people in hospital now in the ICU wards, then all of a sudden, um, O'Toole looked like he was praising Kenny for doing such a bad job, and then the media began pushing O'Toole, and O'Toole wouldn't even mention Jason's, Kenny's name after that, because Kenny is so uh, looked to be toxic. And, of course, Trudeau was gleefully uh, very happy to uh, link the two together. That's, I think, and th that may, may have actually helped um, the Liberals throughout the country, but especially in Alberta, because the big issue right now in Alberta, federal election is over, is Kenny's future. And he's facing a lot of pressure right now in his own party to hold a leadership uh, vote relatively soon. So, yes. Kenny became an issue in the federal election. He has tried so hard to not be an issue. He went on vacation during the election, but that only backfired on him when the third wave became so bad. So Ken Kenny, it seems, has created a big problem for the Conservatives in Alberta. It may not look like that out to outside observers, but it certainly is the case. And the question now is, what happens with Jason Kenny? So imagine the conversations between federal conservatives and uh, Alberta Kenny conservatives in the aftermath of this election outcome. You're writing a column. What are you focusing on that we should be reading, Graham? It's on how Kenny has become an issue, became an issue in this federal election, and that's going to bounce back on him. So he's managed to irritate not only the public in Alberta and um, the federal conservatives, but this is going to reinforce this. this uh, loop where I think the pressure is on Kenny both from his own party supporters and the public in Alberta and now federal conservatives maybe to step down. We'll see how that goes. There'll be a caucus meeting this week but the big issue right now for us in Alberta the takeaway from the federal election is how Kenny influenced the election inadvertently and how that result will then influence Kenny's future which right now seems to be very much up in the air.